at Illinois Toolworks Run. Here's a terrific company that I've repeatedly recommended to you as the best industrial that perhaps you've never heard of. For those of you who still aren't familiar with this one, come on, wake up. Illinois Toolworks makes specialized industrial equipment for a variety of niche markets. Their products are involved in everything deep sea oil rigs, bridges, wind, turbines, healthcare, automobiles, construction, aerospace, mobile devices. The company's got great management, terrific margins, and a fabulous track record. And just this morning, Illinois Toolworks reported yet another excellent quarter. The company posted a nine cent earnings beat off with buck 45 basis higher than expected revenue. Even better, it gave you 3.5% organic growth and management raised full year sales and forecast for 2017. Put it all together, you can understand why the stock vaulted close to 5 bucks or more than 3% today, climbed to a brand new all-time high. So should you be worried that you missed this one, or is it possible that there's a lot more upside? Let's take a closer look with Scott Santi. He's the chairman and CEO of Illinois Toolworks. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Santi, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Hi, Have Jim. a seat. Thank you. All right, how does a company do so much better than the industry it sells to. And I'm going to point that out because we all know that automotive is a good business, but it's not the kind of business that's generating the kind of return that you are. What are you taking? Share new products? What is, how does it work? Well, the automotive story specifically, Jim, is all about uh, the, the sort of niche that we play in that space. So we are a value-added problem solver for the OEM customer. Uh, we participate in a very limited sort of niche space in the industry high engineer content, high level of problem solve for our customers. Uh, to give you an example, we have uh, the average bill of material in a car is roughly $15,000. We have maybe $35 a car. So very niche, but very engineered. We step in and solve a problem when the OEMs need one. Okay. And on that $35, to your point on, on the terms of growth potential from there, we feel like the ultimate relevant market for us is about $200 a car. So plenty of room to run in terms of further penetration. Well, and that's really been the growth story. Okay, I want, I use, want to use that as an example because sure. I want you to talk about 80-20 because sure. that's really what this company is about. I want, right. If people understand 80-20, they'll know why it's not too late to buy. Yeah, okay. So 80-20 is the operating system that we use inside every ITW company. It's been around, started up inside ITW back in the mid-80s and it's been something we've been practicing across the company ever since. And it really is built around a phenomenon that we see over and over again in our kinds of companies, our kinds of businesses, which is the fact that typically 20% of a business's customers and product lines generate 80% of revenue. And the inverse is also true, right? So eight, over 80% of, uh, of a business's customers and product lines typically only generate roughly 20% of their revenue. So what we, what we do with that insight is radically simplify the business by focusing on that small handful of customers and product lines that generate the, the majority of the revenue in the business. And we also significantly reduce or even eliminate all the cost and complexity that goes with supporting those large numbers of customers and products that generate a relatively small proportion and, of, and of the And that's how you can keep raising margins, which is really the ITW right. story. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people felt that it was impossible to continue to take margins up welding. These are old businesses, but you're able to keep wrenching it out. Yeah, and it's really comes about from that ability to really laser-like focus right. on those larger customers and more dominant product lines that, that really drive the bulk of the profitability in any business. You still, you're seeing some good demand. I mean, one of the things that stood out here, especially in a day when France, uh, which you had good numbers, in, right. uh, when French government uh, changes here, uh, the, lucky, yeah. the surge in Europe is really quite extraordinary. Yeah. We, and that's just, they're doing better, more demand? We saw a nice uptick in Europe in the quarter, up 6% over, uh, overall across the company. It was fairly, you know, it was the automotive business that you referred to earlier was a, a good part of it, but overall pretty broad based. Construction in Europe for us was pretty good as well. And test and measurement test and was measurement, very strong. Absolutely. I'd say the you know the the story beyond the geography in the quarter for us was also that we saw a nice uptick in the business spending parts of our portfolio. So welding test and measurement globally where we've had a fairly anemic environment in terms of business right. investment, at least you know, in the quarter, we saw some signs of that perking up a little bit. So the organic growth, which is rather short, I'm going to cover all the industrials. You've got the sure. best so far. 3.5 in, in a kind of sluggish environment. That's inventions and also catering, to listening to the customers? Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and as, as we've talked about a lot, we've had a big pivot in the company going on over the last four years in terms of really driving towards a much more concentrated effort on building an organic front end in the company. So part of the progress is just the result of that effort it's and, working. Then, and then some of the macro help we got in the quarter in terms of, again, that business investment 
Right. La last question. Sure. Welding is a business. You and I have talked about this. We're, it's kind of a lost art in this country. Yes, it is. And you recognize that. We can't train all these welders. So you've created products that don't necessarily require many years of apprenticing as a welding. Now, that's just something where you listened to what people had to say, and you came up with a better mousetrap. That's right. Big shortage of skilled labor. Right. In, in a lot of industries, we see it also beyond welding in, in construction right now, where it's, it's you know, one of the limiters in terms of that market is the ability to, for contractors to find qualified uh, con right. labor in, in the construction arena, similar in welding. So a big part of what we're on in terms of value add is to try to build our equipment that has a, a high level of sophistication in terms of technology, but to make it easier and easier for a less experienced welder well, to get up to speed. You've done an amazing job. This is a great American industrial that we should all be very proud of with a stock that I think can still go much higher. That's Scott Santis, the chairman and CEO of Illinois Tours, Symbols ITW. It, it just never quits. What can I say? Now you know why. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.